Whether it's football, cross country, or cheerleading, if young athletes are competing, you can bet there are parents on the sidelines cheering them on for the most part. Today, taking a hard look at what's encouraging and what's potentially damaging to your kids. Joining us is Dr. Bo Leaf, a sports psychology consultant here in Oklahoma City. Welcome back. Thank you. Well, most coaches, of course, will tell you that they've had to deal with some nightmare parents. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, so what do, you, what do you have to say about those coaches, to those coaches? Well, you know, when we see what we see in those situations is generally a parent who is trying to be a little overly involved, constantly contacting, texting, calling, anything that they can possibly do just to be a little too much. Let, trust the process is what I would tell the parent. So let's look at some do's then when it comes to encouraging your kids. Okay. Some of the things that I think the number one thing, listen to your kid. Mm -hmm. Let them have an opportunity to tell you what's going on. You know, we need to be supportive and encouraging to them. And so making sure that we're using, you know, positive language with them is another thing that I think would be really beneficial. But I think that number one is listen to what they have to say. I also like the, there on the graphic, do allow them to opt out of a sport. I think that's great. If a child hates it, then they hate it. What about the argument that kids should stick to their commitments? <laughs> do you think that that, that they learn resilience that way? Or what are your thoughts on that? Sometimes, yes. I mean, to an extent. And I think this depends on the age of the child. Um, I think we do need to teach them that, yes, we need to stick to it. But again, it's listening to the child and understanding the reason why they are not wanting to do it. We need to give them choice. Choice is important. Yeah. And many parents also see their children make all kinds of mistakes out on the field. You know, mistakes can be a good thing. Absolutely, they can. You know, we need to learn as parents that our children are hardwired for failure. This is how, this <laughs> is how, like it or not. <laughs> <laughs> this is how we, you know, learn coping mechanisms. Mm -hmm. This is what happens there. And again, it's swoop in, be loving, supporting, and help them out. Okay. We want our kids also to feel confident, but what do you think about misplacing blames on things like the weather or the equipment or the referees? Is that a bad thing? Uh, yes, <laughs> yeah. absolutely. We need to teach our children to have some accountability for their actions, you know, and, you know, teach them to anticipate what may happen so they can plan for it, mm -hmm. accept it when it does happen, and adjust in the training period so then they understand what they need to fix and how to do it. Absolutely. I remember I was a goalie in soccer, and I let the ball fly right past me into the goal and didn't even look behind me <laughs> because I, I assumed I was on one side of the goal and I wasn't. I was actually smack dab in the middle. I've never forgotten that, though, because I learned that mistake to always be aware of my surroundings. So a lot of parents relive their youth vicariously through their children. We see it on the sidelines all the time. How can you have the self-awareness to recognize when you're doing that? It's really understanding, you know, what language am I using here? What's my environment? Um, am I being degrading? You know, it's really being able to be, again, be supportive in the situation, no matter what's going on. Let the coach do their job. And if you need to have a conversation with them in private, that would be the best time to do that. But be there for the child, no matter what. Say, I'm proud of you, I love you, and I'm here for you. Yeah, those coaches, man, they do take a beating verbally for sure. Okay, what do you say to the people who say star athletes had very pushy parents? And they do sometimes. That actually does occur. But I think that it's best to kind of reflect on our own process, really look at what we need to do by asking for help if we need to do that. And I think that that's the best option that we have is to reach out for the assistance of professionals and, and let them do their job. All right, Dr. Leaf, thanks again for joining us. We'll see you again soon. Thank you. Appreciate it. And for more information on sports consulting and injury recovery, you can schedule a consultation at drboleaf.com.